In Jesus' name of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made. We'll be glad and rejoice in it. We we'll pray, O Lord, that you reveal yourself to us more today than ever before in Jesus' name. That your word will be taken by the Spirit of God out of this Holy Bible and you will transfer it into every heart present here in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, O Lord, that your word will do us good. And help us, Lord, this special day that anything and everything we do, action, attitude, motive, conduct, anything and everything will be to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. And Lord, here is your servants. And your servants ought to say, Speak, Lord, for the servants are hearing. And Lord, whatever you want to say, however long it may take, here we are before you. Speak to our hearts. Lord, we pray that our flesh, our old habits, our thoughts, ideas in our mind, in our brain, will not come between us and you. Take hold of us. Fashion out of us useful, worthy, profitable instruments we ought to be. Help us understand that a moment in your presence is a precious moment with your treasure. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. We're dealing with holiness and sanctification of Bible characters. Obviously, from the subject, from the topic, you'll see that we're looking at the heroes of faith, the worthies of old, the pilgrims that walked in this same highway of holiness before the present generation, the present dispensation. And it will take us to the Old Testament and bring us into the New Testament. And see people of like passions, like you and I, receiving the grace of God into their lives, and having that grace transform them, change them, and make them to so live that their lives were pleasing unto God. And as we look at these Bible characters, there is one thing that will be registered on your mind. It is this. That holiness is not an impossible attainment. There were men and women of like passions as we are. In Bible days, who were sanctified, who lived consistent holy lives. They faced greater temptations than you and I will ever be called to face. And yet, they were holy and righteous. They endured more fiery trials, more serious persecutions than we can ever be called upon to face. And yet, in the midst of it all, their white lily was not stained with the dirt of sin and corruption around them. All these people we're going to look at, Bible characters, you will see that although they lived in the midst of sinful, perverted people, yet they persevered in holiness and the sanctified life. One thing is very clear. In the lives of these Bible characters, it is this. They valued sanctification and holiness more than reputation. And when there was any call for them to choose between their reputation and holiness, they threw reputation away and they chose holiness. 
Not only that, these people, they valued holiness more than their earthly employment. And when some of these people were exalted to a high position in the king's empire, and the holiness life, and the sanctification of the heart, and their consecration and the commitment they had to the Lord was threatened. They chose to drop, give up the earthly employment and hold on to holiness. These people were looking at the valued, the exalted holiness more than wealth, more than fame. More than family. When some of their family members did not agree with them, these people were on the side of the Lord. In fact, they valued holiness more than life itself. And even when life was threatened, they chose to be on the side of the Lord. As we look at these people, you'll discover something. That pleasure or pain gain or loss, joy or sorrow, favor or imprisonment meant nothing to them. Holiness was their chief aim. Holiness was their most valued possession, which they would not allow anyone or anything to take away from them. Strong desire then and consecration on your part and on my part. What prayer and faith can help you and I to receive such an experience from the Lord that these people received. Let me just show you at the beginning in this introduction, some of them, very few, in the Old as well as in the New Testament, in Job chapter 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Oz, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil, hated evil, shunned evil, separated from evil, kept away from all forms of evil. And in verse 7, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and is huge, shunned, hated evil. It was Almighty God Himself that could see through and through, that could see the manner as well as the motive. That could see the action as well as the attitude. That could see the external behavior and the inward motivation of that behavior. It was Almighty God Himself that said, Have you seen my servant Job? None like him. Righteous, perfect, fearing God, avoiding all forms of evil. It was possible for him. And it's possible for you. In Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. Verse 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. Because an excellent spirit was found in him. And the king thought to set him over. The whole reign. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion, no fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error 
of fault found in him. Here we find another Old Testament character. And we're told that although the people sought to find fault, and they used the microscope as well as the intelligence of men, determined they must find something. This Daniel had been in the Babylonian Empire. And 70 years had passed, and then the Middle Persians were now there. And even though this man had been there in that territory more than 70 years, and they could see all the records from the time of Nebuchadnezzar to the time of Belshazzar to the time of Darius, as they sought in all the books of the records, the past, and they looked at his present life, and they investigated. They could not find any fault, any error in his life. Yeah, that's a man like you and I. And if it was possible for him, it's possible for us today. Turn on to the pages of the New Testament. Luke chapter 1, verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the cause of Abiah. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. And her name was Elizabeth. Already, even though holiness has not even been mentioned in that verse, it is just giving us an historical fact. And it's telling us, this man you are meeting here, his name Zacharias. He was a priest. And you understand, he so carried out the word of the Lord to the detail, they even tell us he refused to marry ordinary Israelitish woman. That the wife was of the daughters of Aaron, Elizabeth. And now directly in verse 6, and they were both righteous. Not righteous just in the presence of one another. Not righteous only in the presence of their neighbors. Not righteous only in the presence of religious people who may deliberately close their eyes and not want to see any fault in them. They, husband and wife, were both righteous before God. And then, as if that were not enough, gives us the explanation of what it means for them walking. In all the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord, what's the next word? Blameless. And you can see, men and women like us, the people that knew if there is anything important on earth, if there is anything we need to passionately pray for, run after and receive, and possess and hold on to ourselves without giving it up any time in life, whatever the situation, it is this sanctification, purification, the cleansing of the heart, and the holiness of life before God and before men. As we move on deep into the New Testament, you come into first Thessalonians. And in First Thessalonians, we know those uh, who are referred to when it says in chapter 2, verse 10. Before I read that verse 10, come on with me to chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father. And in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. So then, chapter 2, verse 10. Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily, and justly, and unblameably, we, who are the we? That's why I read chapter 1, verse 1 to you, Paul. 
Silvanus, Silas, and Timotheus, Timothy. He said, you Thessalonians are witnesses. When we came to your city, and we came to preach the word unto you, the ladies that came to serve us food, they are witnesses. The men that came to clean our rooms where you put us, they are witnesses. The people that interacted with us and went to the market to buy something and they came back, they are witnesses. The accounts that we had to make while you were taking care of us and the people that gave us the money and the retirement and the return we made, they are witnesses. And then the whole congregation of all those men and women, they are witnesses that nothing passed between us and them. That any one of them will say that there is no holiness or sanctification. He said, you... Thessalonians, you are witnesses, but you can only witness the external conduct, character, behavior. The one you cannot see inside God is witness. Here is what tells us the kind of life the Bible believers lived. Here is what tells us that those Bible believers, they exalted sanctification, holiness, purity of heart and life above, above ministry, above title, above fame, above wealth, above pleasure, above family. Above political assignment, they exalted this holiness without which no man shall see the Lord above anything you can find, you can have, you can possess here on earth. And they knew it wasn't just holiness before men. You know, it's possible to walk sanctimoniously. It's possible to live a controlled life in the presence of men, but inside. And that's what happened to the Pharisees. Ye are clean outwardly, but inwardly you are full of corruption and dead men's bones. You know those Pharisees, they knew the method. And they knew how to make their behavior, their character, Externally acceptable unto men. The problem was for them. They didn't know how to have heart, spirit, attitude, motive, disposition, internal part. They didn't know how to make that holy. And God desires truth in the inward parts. But in the case of Paul, Silvanus, and Timotheus, you are witnesses, and God also. How holily, and justly, and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. That's why we're looking at uh, the lives of these people. What a wonderful thing it will be just to stay by their side. Even if it's just to carry their sandals. Or just to clean their sandals for them. Just to see them. Just to see them. Just to see them. If it were possible. Just to be a messenger. In the house of Job. Just to clean his surrounding. And just to look at the face of Job. When somebody came. And said, we were in the field. And then there was a fire from the sky. The fellow said, from heaven. And the fire burnt up all the field and all your animals. What 
it will be for you. For you not to go and preach, not to go and witness, not to go and pray, not to go and counsel, not to, uh, just, just to stay in the compound, in the yard, in the house of Job. And while that one was finishing, somebody ran in and said, the Sabians came and stole everything, killed all the servants. I am the only one remaining to tell you the bad news. If you were there, and just as it was finishing, somebody came and said, Job, how can I tell you this? Your children were having fellowship in the house, and a mighty wind blew, blew upon the house, destroyed the house. All those beautiful daughters and handsome boys, they are killed. All in one day, having all the information coming unto you, coming, coming, like a barrage. Property lost, servants lost, children lost. And then, for you to be there, and see the reaction, and see the response, and see that man quietly go to the praying corner, and lift up his eyes unto the Lord. The Lord has given the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And see him, instead of cursing God, instead of crying, still singing to the Lord, all to the Lord I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and adore him. I Surrender all. No servants, no property, no children. And the people came and accused him. You must be a big, great sinner. You are a hypocrite. Then he said, He knows the way that I take. And I know that my Redeemer liveth. He saved me. He redeemed me. I know I'm born again. I don't understand. Why all these things perished in one day. But he understands. He understands. And when he has tried me like gold, I will come forth pure. Perfect. And with these my very eyes, I will see him. I will see him on that day. Not another. But I will see him. For you to be in the compound of Job at that time. And then for you to look at yourself that you lost a little job. And you lost a little accommodation. And you couldn't get a wife in time. Or you got a wife and the wife will not read the Bible. And the wife will not follow the Lord. And because of that... Nobody knows the things I face. It's not an easy road. No, no. It's not an easy road. What happened to you? Go and visit Job. And Daniel. 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 This Daniel. An angel came from heaven. It's in chapter 9. Chapter 10. Don't I'll tell you. When the angel came to Daniel, the angel <laughs> looked at Daniel and he said, Oh, Daniel, a man greatly favored of the Lord. Check your Bible. Nobody, nobody, nobody has been addressed like that. By an angel coming from heaven. Three times. Chapter 9, once. Chapter 10, two times. A man greatly beloved. And this man, just worship the Lord, just follow the Lord. And they said, if anybody will pray to any God, anywhere, these 30 days, he'll be thrown into the den of lions. And then he knew that the decree had been signed. And he knew the decree of the Middle Persians. It's a law that cannot be reversed. Once they signed it, that's it. Over. And Daniel, after knowing that the thing was signed, 30 minutes break, it will not hurt some people. 
In fact, there are many methods of praying. You can be walking on the road with your eyes open, and you can be communing with God. Use method. And you can be doing any other service. And then opening your mouth and opening something to the Lord. He understands, he hears. You can pray that way. At least avoid dying in the lion's den. But Daniel, his own faith, his own commitment, his own consecration, his own holiness didn't have any worldly message in it. And he went to his house. As he did a four time. And he opened the windows of his house. That's what he always did. Because of the prayer of Solomon. Lord, if your people sin against you. And they are carried to captivity. And in that land of captivity. If they will turn towards this temple, Jerusalem. And pray. Hear them. That's what Daniel was doing. He opened his windows and he turned towards Jerusalem. And he prayed a four time. While he was praying, the people were outside. Ah, we have seen him. We have seen him. We caught him today. You will not escape this one. The law of the Middle Persians has caught you today. The sea cannot be river. You are in for it. Lions then, you will get there today. And quietly and systematically and slowly... He continued his prayer until he read the final psalm that the Israelites will read and then said, Amen, Jehovah is God. And he came out. As he was coming out, they were ready with handcuff. And they caught him. And then they took him to the lion's den. He got to the lion's den not knowing what will happen. As he entered, they dropped him there. And when those lions saw a holy man, they lost their hunger. They lost their ferocious, wild characteristic. All of them, you don't understand? Is a millennium that God gave him right there. You don't know that God made the rapture for Enoch before his time. And then for Daniel, he gave him the millennium before his time. When the sheep and the lion will be together. And the lions will not be able to hurt the sheep. He said, Daniel, you are the most honored preferred person I know on earth. The millennium is still thousands of years away. I'll give you the millennium right there. Go there. And he slept all the night. And the king could not sleep. The king woke up in the morning. And he said, Daniel, even the king knew, servant of the most high God, is your God whom you serve continually. Let me stop for a moment. You people, there is no witch that can touch a holy man. What we need is not knowing how to pray the prayer of deliverance. What we need is holiness. Show me the witch. Show me the wizard. Show me the lion that is going up and down, to and fro in the earth, that can touch a holy man. Show me the demons, the legions of demons from the pit of hell that can touch, that can cut short, that can take a minute, a day out of the life of an holy man. That demon, that Satan has not existed. When they drop this man, holiness, holiness makes a fence around you. Holiness, holiness makes you a favorite of heaven. Holiness, holiness brings you on the side of the angels to stay in the same place. Holiness, holiness makes prayers to be answered before you open your mouth to even pray the prayer. And, uh, you know, 
servant of the most high God is your God whom you serve continually able to deliver you from the lions and there came the boys holiness is good holiness is good when you get to that place when God touches your heart when God purifies your heart when God cleanses your, your very motive when God turns you to be another man when you are walking as if you are walking on the air when your head, your mind, your thoughts is all holiness unto the Lord you don't know there are even witches in the world you don't know that there are even evil people in the world and Daniel, he answered, he said O king, <laughs> live forever that's what he always told them my God has sent his angels and closed the mouths of the lion and they have not been able to hurt me because before you O king and before him my God I have not done anything 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 before you external before God internal I have not done anything that's of sin and the king was so glad and happy and he commanded they should bring Daniel up and those lions they had never seen any visitor like that before that or since that time and you can see sorrow on the faces of the lions you see going we never had so much peace no hunger when that creature holy man angel whatever he was when he was here and he brought Daniel out and they examined him and I think when you get to heaven you will check up and I think that the king was afraid to even touch this holy man and maybe some people said it's accidental the, the lions were not there the lions went uh, they had gone to look for other things and uh, to look for food so when Daniel got there there was no lion there and that's why he came L -l let's find out whether the lions are there or not and he took all these other men you understand? Presidents and princes, 120 of them, the people that helped Darius to manage the whole kingdom, he took them, all of them. He said, this one single Daniel is of more value than all these 120 princes and and, and the presidents. And he threw them into the lions then as they were coming. The hunger of the lions came back. The ferocious, wild, characteristic instinct came back. And he finished all of them. And that's what I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters. When I preach holiness to you, it's not because I don't love you. How can I manifest my love to you? Except by giving you the greatest, the greatest, the highest, the most sublime of all subjects in the Bible. That's why we are here. God will give it to you. I know God will give it to you. Don't mind whatever you have been in the past. Don't mind whatever your ministry has been in the past. Today, 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 God will do something for you. Although we are going to pray, but more than our prayer, Jesus is praying for you. And this thing that Job had, that Daniel had, that Zechariah had, you will have. And when you finish this day and believe in God, and you make this day a line of demarcation between the future and the past, you will look at yourself and say, am I the same person? Because the Lord is going to do something. And you know, the kind of protection that he gave to Daniel and all those other people, he will give it to you. You understand? God doesn't have too many Daniels. There are very few. And God doesn't have too many holy people, too many sanctified people. 
when God takes hold of you and he sanctifies you and he makes you holy you are one of the very few people that God has on earth that's why after this day after the Lord has sanctified you more than yesterday and has given you this thing we're looking at you will not worry about witches and wizards again lion familiars bring something walking here walking there you'll just walk across them like this whether they see you or not if they raise up their hand they'll not be able to bring it down let the lord do something on this special day and he will do it even the people that are outside there they may not be hearing what we're saying here god is going to do something for them and everyone here the promise of the Lord is that something will happen to you that is beyond your expectation. He's going to do it. Very quickly. Number one. The examples of the sanctified in the Old Testament. Examples of the sanctified in the Old Testament. In Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5 from verse 22 and in a word was God after he begat Mr. Seller 300 years and begat sons and daughters 24 and Enoch word was God and he was not for God took him obviously that man the Lord sanctified him or what do you think wasn't he sanctified wasn't he holy? For 300 years? When all the people around were corrupt and evil? For the Lord to make him walk with the Lord? 300 years? That's what we want. And it will happen. Genesis chapter 39. Reading there from verse 2. Genesis 39 verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Well, you know the story. Eventually, the wife of that master fixed eyes on him and said, Do this with me. His father was not there. His mother was not there. His brethren were not there. The Israelites that had a little glimpse before the law came, had a little glimpse of how a person should live, they were not there. He was alone. No church, no district, no house fellowship, no complete Bible to read, no cassette to listen to, no counselor, Nobody to encourage him. Nobody to pray with him as a prayer partner. And he was there 13 years without any fellow believer encouraging him in the way of the Lord. And yet the man said, how can I do this and sin against my God? And this woman pestered him day after day. And this young man, he had not known a woman. And biologically, his body will tell him, growing older and older, he was getting near 30 years of age. But he said, no, master will not know. All the other people will not know. Daddy will not hear about it, so he will not be disappointed. Nobody will know, but there is a God in heaven. That is watching me. And he knows when nobody will know. I cannot do it. I think about the holiness of this man. Eventually the woman became desperate. And caught hold of him and said. You must. And the man left his clothes in her hand. And ran away. Then the woman turned around. And cried out. See, insult upon injury, this slave that they bought with money came to us here as a sweeper of the ground, as a house servant. See, he came 
to misuse me, mess me up. When I cried, then he ran out. If you were as deeper as you are, will you not go to the press and publish something in the press so they don't spoil your name? Holiness closed his mouth. The master came back and the wife said, You see what you have done? You see this slave you brought in here? He wanted to mess me up. And when I cried, because I'm a faithful wife, holy, righteous wife, you know me, husband, that I will never, never, never do anything. And this boy, he wanted to spoil my faithfulness and loyalty to you, my husband. The man was even so angry, he didn't ask any question, just took Joseph. And Joseph didn't complain. And Joseph didn't grumble. And Joseph didn't fight. And Joseph didn't report to anybody. And Joseph didn't say, Ah, if this is where holiness will land me, no more holiness. That God that cannot defend me at this time, no more holiness. He went to the prison. And when he was in the prison, he didn't tell the jailer, I'm innocent, I'm a good man. He just kept on walking in his way. All the lies they told about him, told against him, all the lies were there. He will not open his mouth, he will not change his character. This is holiness. This is holiness. And then they brought two servants there. He woke up in the morning and he saw those two servants. And those two servants were sad on their facial appearances uh, if you are uh, if you are sad what are you sad about i have my own cross i am carrying i have my own burden i am bearing i have my own problem i have not solved if you are sad that's your business but no holiness oh he said why are you sad why is your countenance turned down oh they said we had a dream I had mine, he had his, and there's nobody to interpret for us. Oh, he said, does not interpretation come from God? Forget about yourself and concentrate on him. Are you suffering persecution? Have they accused you wrongfully of something you didn't do? Did somebody stand here at the pulpit and pointed at you and accused you wrongly? Are you going to drop your holiness because of that? Go and ask Joseph. Who oh, said, does not interpretation come tell me your dream? And this one told him, he had not lost the gifts of the spirit just because of persecution, just because of imprisonment. And he gave him the interpretation. When the second fellow saw the interpretation was good, he told his dream. And although the interpretation was negative, he didn't change the negative message. He gave him the negative interpretation. And then he told the one that had the positive interpretation, remember me when it's well for you. And didn't talk about Potiphar. And didn't talk about Potiphar's wife. And didn't say... You know, nothing they said about me you might have heard. They are just trying to spoil my name. I'm a child of God. I believe in holiness and sanctification. I am. He didn't say that. He just said, they took me from my place and stole me away and brought me into this place. He didn't even talk about his brothers. That his brothers sold him there. If you were, you will tell stories. If you were, you will go through all the details. That I'm a good person You will use the pulpit You will use the press You will use the people You will use your friends You will use everybody To show that you are righteous and holy This discipline is not just Joseph didn't do that Just remember me When it's good for you And that man came out And as he came out And he restored him to his place And then they hanged the other man. He forgot. He forgot about Joseph. Holiness. The people you do good to, not everybody will remember you. The people you help, not everybody will remember you. Ah, They have forgotten me so soon. Alright? You know, in this world in which we are living now, 
goodness doesn't pay anymore. Helping people doesn't pay anymore. Sacrificing your life, your money, everything you have, and putting your life on the line, helping people, it doesn't pay anymore. I'm not going to help anybody anymore. Ah, not just uh, he continued in the prison like that. The time of God is the best. If that man forgot me and I'm still here, it's because it's not the time of the Lord yet. He wasn't angry. He didn't fight God. He didn't ask any question. Why? Then, two years after, you understand, two years, seven hundred and thirty days. And every day, every day that Joseph woke up, this man did not remember me. This man did not remember me. Then Pharaoh had a dream. And then, the man said, when they couldn't find interpretation, I remember my fault this day. There is one of the Hebrews. He's in the prison. Then they brought him out. And as they brought him out, he shaved his head. He cleaned up. He must be his best to even serve the king of Egypt. And he told him the dream. And he gave the interpretation. And then eventually, they said, can we find anybody? Having an excellent spirit like this. That will be able to handle this sin. And they promoted him. And Pharaoh said, you are next to me. Above Potiphar. Above the wife of Potiphar. Holiness. If it were the holiness of today. Aha. Aha. No condition is Tell me. No condition is permanent. Potiphar thought he is up there. I am down there. Threw me in the prison. Here we are now. The table has turned. I am up there. Potiphar is down there. First of all, wife of Potiphar, where are you? Oh, okay. God's locker up. You reap what you sow. Potiphar, you didn't check up. Whether that story was true or not, lock him up. Did Joseph do that? And then his brothers came to buy food. Here they came. And he knew them. They couldn't recognize him. He didn't speak in their language. He spoke in the Egyptian language with an interpreter. And while they were going, he gave them all the food they wanted and he told the servants, put their money back into their bags. And as they got to the inn, lo and behold, as they opened their bags to give provender feet to their animals, everyone saw their money there. Joseph. But <laughs> Joseph, he was holy and wise. And the combination of holiness and wisdom is very important. So that they will come back, he delayed one of them. And so when they got back home, one of them was missing. And then, so that he will see his junior brother Benjamin, he said, That Benjamin, if you don't bring him back, you will not see my face. And eventually, you know the story, they brought Benjamin back. And he saw Benjamin. He remembered the milk of human family love. He wanted to cry. So he rushed out, went to cry, washed his face and came back. Eventually, he told all the Egyptians to go away. He said, I am your brother. I am Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Is my father yet alive? No. Don't accuse yourself. You didn't do it. God permitted it. All things work together for good. For them that love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. Benjamin, you recognize me now? 
I'm your senior brother. Judah, Reuben, Simeon, Levi. How are your families now? And your children? How is daddy? Can he still walk? See this family. Go back and get your family. I will feed you free of charge. I will not punish you. Benjamin, tell my father that his son, beloved son, is still alive. They couldn't talk. They went back home. They told their father, Joseph is still alive. He couldn't believe. And the Lord came to him in a dream. And he said, Jacob, go. I will be with you. He got there. And Jacob saw Joseph. Embraced him. They wept on one another. And Jacob said, Now I can die. I have seen Joseph. And Joseph never told his father, Daddy, what did they say happened to me? These my brothers were the people that sold me. He never told his father until his father died. And when his father died, they buried the father with a great mourning and lamentation. Then they came back. And all his brothers said, Now, Jacob our father is dead. This Joseph, what he could not do when daddy was alive is going, going to punish us. And they all went to Joseph and said, They were prostrating. He told them many years ago, We were in the field. And we had chiefs. And all the chiefs bent down, lay down. And mine was standing. Are you going to reign over us? The same became fulfilled. They lay before him. And he said, your father said before he died, don't count the iniquity of, his, of your servants, anything. Ah, he said, what are you talking about? Are you still remembering that? I have forgotten that. Am I God? I will not touch you. That is holiness. If God can do it for them in days of old, what are we doing with hatred in our heart? You want to revenge? Why? Let God make us holy and righteous. Let's live like a family. And whatever Levi did, Judah did, Simon did to hurt you, you are in the prison. Why do you remember that? Forget it. Serve the Lord. Where you are going, God will take you there. Whatever they do, whatever imprisonment, that dream that God gave you many years ago, you will get there. Don't fight any man. Commit all your ways to the Lord. Rise up. Let us pray. Let the Lord touch our hearts. Let the Lord make us sanctified and holy. He can do it. He did it for women and men of old. He can do it for us. He will do it. He loves you. He will do it. He's done it for other people. He will do it for you.
Why are you going to hate anybody? You are a child of God. Whatever they did, they didn't understand. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. Let him sanctify you. Let him make you holy. He will do it. Yes, he can do it. Far back in the Old Testament, before Calvary, before the cross, it was done. Now on this side of the cross, he will do it. <laughs>